front of the halaqah so that the angels can surround us, inshallah. Uh, you will feel the barakah with this. This is how the majlis gets uh, intimate. Alhamdulillah, it gets warm. Allahi barik fikum, ya Rabb. Rafa Allahu qadrakum. Jazakum Allah khair. Yani, if we didn't know it would be beneficial, we wouldn't ask you to get up from your seat and then to make this big move. But wallahi, we know that it's uh, it's a sunnah and it has tangible benefit for all of us, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi al-Alameen. Tayyip. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to begin with our first chapter in this book, Mukhtasar Minhaj Al-Qasadim. Come on, today I have, uh, who likes, who likes uh, Oud here? Oud, any, any Oud? Okay. If you like Oud only, you can answer this question, because I have a bottle of Oud, right? It smells very heavy. I don't wear it. You know, I get complaints and stuff like that. Although I do kind of like it, but it's not. It's not hundred percent. I want to ask you a question about who, what the source of this book is. Who are the three? What are the three books that this book came from? You like Aud? Oh yeah. See, he just got married a year, and I don't think he's ready for the Aud. Alhamdulillah. Anyway, so what's what's the source? Okay, and then who summarized it? Ibn al Jawzi, and then Ibn Qudama. Ahsan, Ahsan Allah, MashaAllah. It's right in here. There goes the Oud. Bismillah. khair. I hope you like it. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah rahman rahim. So uh, today, inshallah, we are going to begin with the first chapter. Come on, the, the topic of, of this book is what? What's the topic? What do we say? How do we call it? What do we call it in Arabi? Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah means purification, self-purification. What do you think the first chapter of self-purification should be about? You would think it's Salah or Tahara, like, uh, you know, most other fiqh books and whatnot. Or you might think the heart and the types of hearts that are out there so that we might learn what our hearts are like and what we are dealing with, right? But it's not the first chapter. The first chapter of Tazkiyah to Nafs is Kitabul Ilm, right? The chapter of, of Ilm, of knowledge. And the reason it, it's, it's knowledge is because it goes back to the essence of the creation of mankind. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, he created him. I want to ask you a question. Adam alayhi salam was created from what? From clay, from mud, from this, this earth, this dirt. Okay. Was it any mud? Was it the mud of, of Jannah? Or was it the mud of this dunya? طيب. Are we... In the mid-level mid level dunya, or I mean the ard, the ard that we live in, as sama dunya right here. Is it like in the middle, or is it close to Jannah, or is it the lowest one? So we're in the lowest one. Okay. <laughs> we didn't make the cut higher, right? So Allah is testing us, but He's rewarding us immensely. Tayyib, what about the heavens? There's seven heavens, correct? Are we the, the middle? Which heaven are we? The lowest one? طيب. Yani we're from the mud of the lowest earth of the lowest heaven. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us from this mud and then presents it to the malaika and then he tells them what? Okay, this is my new creation. See, this is, they're going to run the earth. 
And the angels were created from what? From Nur. And all they have is intellect. Do they have shahwa? They don't have shahwa. All they have is ilm. It is just pure ilm. So now this ilm is judging us. They see Bani Adam and they say, أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ Right? Ya Allah, from what we see, he cannot maintain this earth the way you, you are proposing they will do it. Right? They're incapable. They have faults within them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A'lamu malat Know what you do not know But then what did Allah do? What's the first thing that occurred to Adam alayhi salam? Wa'allama Adam He taught him So ilm Is the essence of what brings us up Nothing That brings us up To the role To the responsibility To the succession of this earth Like ilm does So without ilm we cannot get to the level where we are supposed to get to. And with this ilm, Allah presented us to the angels, presented Adam, our father, alayhi salam, to the angels. And then what happened? He said, so, anbi'hum bi asma'ihim. Tell them the names of things. Tell them the knowledge that even they do not know. And all they have is knowledge. And he told him, he told the angels. And so, they all prostrated. Except for Iblis. And we know the story. And that's where the rivalry between us and Iblis began. It was jealousy over the succession of earth. It was jealousy over Ilm, him having the knowledge. It was jealousy over many things. It was envy and arrogance. Right? Tabif, this is what gave us our authority. If this is what gave us our Yani dignified status amongst the angels. In order to restore this status, in order to restore this status, what do we need to do? What's the first thing we need to do? Ilm. We need to go back and get the ilm. Without ilm, there's no status that Allah accepted for us and commanded us to have okay so this is the importance of it also knowledge without action without ibadah is what is hypocrisy but what about ibadah and purifying the heart and introspection but without ilm trying to check your nafs without ilm Trying to fix your heart without ilm. Trying to rectify your inner self without ilm. What does that produce? No, it is ignorance. Without ilm, it is ignorance. But what does it produce? We said the first is hypocrisy. They know something, but they're not acting upon it. It's not helping them. The second one, they have this, you know, they have this initiative, this himma. They want to do ibadah, but they don't have ilm. What does it produce? Bid'ah. That's the source of what? Innovation. Because an innovation is one of the worst things that a person can do. Why? Because when Allah prescribed, يعني, you know, did you ever like, you know, did you ever ask, you know, your son or your daughter or your employee, oh, can you do it? Can you uh, arrange the room this way? We have a meeting. Uh, in, in one hour and then you come back and it's arranged completely different and you say why did you arrange it this way and they say you know we thought that this is the way you would like it no but I, I told you I want it to be arranged this way yeah but you know I was doing it and I thought you know this is the way I want to do it and this is the way I thought that you would like it. I really have good intentions like well you're in good intentions made me now kick out Half of the staff, we have a staff meeting. It can't fit everyone. We can't feed them because the chairs are without tables and it's arranged a, complete, a completely wrong way. And inevitably, what? This person got fired. Or do you think they kept the job? 
after one, two, three, four times, <laughs> like, dude, are you working for me? Or who are you working for exactly? Right? Why don't you tell your son or your daughter, give me a cup of juice or give me a cup of water? What do they get you? Pepsi. Like, Jamal, I don't want Pepsi. I'm boycotting Pepsi. What, what's it even doing in our house? <laughs> so they bring you a cup of Pepsi and you're like, man, I'm trying to watch my diet. And they keep not obeying your command. But this is something small. And when we're talking about Rabbil Alameen, you got to step this up. Not one notch, not two notches. This is not my dad. This is not my manager. This is not my boss. This is not the king or the whoever. It is. This is Rabbil Alameen. When he tells us, worship me this way, and gives us detailed instructions on how to do it, what does Allah expect us to do? To do it the way He prescribed. Okay? And this is why one of the greatest things, and we're going to talk about this, I mean, dhikr Allah, right? Um, dhikr Allah is one of the greatest things that a person can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا And remember Allah in abundance, kathiran. But Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه in his time, he came in and he saw a group of people gathered up. And they were sitting in a circle, and each one had like a hundred, like, you know, pebbles, small beads in front of them, pebbles. And then one person would say, Sabbihumia! And then they would have a hundred pebbles, and they just start throwing the pebbles. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. And then who comes in and sees them doing this? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion of the Prophet, right? One of the greatest Sahaba, the scholar of the Sahaba, right? Who carried the ilm. Of, like much of the ilm of Islam to the later generations. Ibn Mas'ud comes in, he's like, Man amarakum bihada, who taught you this? Who told you to do this? He said, Wallahi, we, we said, Allah said, Udhkurullah dhikran kathiran, wa dhakirin Allah kathiran, wa dhakirat. So we decided to, like, this is a, a good way to stay consistent with, with our adhkar and the pebbles. And he's like, Wallahi, imma, either you're a people that are upon guidance more than the guidance of Muhammad or you innovated something in a way that Allah does not love. What are you doing exactly? Jamal, is there any, anyone that can think of a way to obey Allah more than Allah prescribed for us or wanted Himself to be obeyed? <laughs> so everything we do needs ilm behind it. It needs a reference. There are some groups that go extreme with the whole bid'ah thing. They say everything is bid'ah, 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 when it's really not, right? We're saying a bid'ah is something that has no reference in the sharia, no reference in the deen, right? And there are some like ulama that come, they build and they base things off uh, certain, certain ahadith and they, you know, they could exaggerate, they could not exaggerate, they could be like in the middle, they could be a little to the right, a little to the left. But anybody that has a a reference in ilm, in the Qur'an, in the Sunnah, or in the ways of the Sahaba, right? They have a reference, then we cannot, you know, cast them as, as people who are committing innovation. Innovation is something completely, like, offshoot, right? Because these generations taught us how to, to they carried the ilm, and they taught us how to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they carried the Qur'an and the Sunnah. طيب. So, I want to begin with uh, a beautiful reference. He said in the beginning is Kitab al-ilm wa What's the benefit and the fadl of, of ilm? What's the benefit and fadl of ilm? You know, when we start with knowledge, somebody's just sitting here today, is like, well, let me hear what the sheikh has to say. You know, I'll get some knowledge, I'll learn something. But what is the benefit of that? What is prescribed to the decision that you made to stay here and listen to a, a, a circle of knowledge, to listen to a book being recited, to listen to an ayah from the Quran, a hadith being explained. What's the benefit of that? The Prophet I want I want you to imagine this. What is the difference? And I want to ask, who wants to answer this question? Before I answer, you could raise your hand. Somebody has to be courageous enough. Mustafa in the back. Jazakallah khair, Mustafa. You're st- sitting on a chair, so I have to ask. You have the luxury of sitting, so I'm going to ask. Like, so Mustafa, 
how big of a difference is between the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the least of the companions? Yani is it is it something small or something enormous? Like you can't even you you can't fathom it, right? It's a huge difference, right? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said the preference or the fadl or the superiority of the person of knowledge and the person without knowledge is like the superiority or the preference of me over the least of you, pointing at the Sahaba. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who has knowledge is levels above the person without knowledge, the same way I am levels of over the least of you. He didn't say Abu Bakr. Even if he said Abu Bakr, it would still be great because he's Rasulullah. But he's saying the least of the Sahab. So just imagine this. So sitting here is the, one of the greatest acts of our just being here and seeking knowledge uh, puts us on this path. Tayyib. Then the, then the Shaykh continues. He said, Tayyib, what if I, I decide Ya Allah, I want to be a scholar. I, I want to be a person of knowledge. I don't want to be jahil. I want to raise in ranks. I want to be as good to the people as the Rasul Sallallahu was to the least of the Sahaba. That's what I want to be. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, man So whoever follows a path to seek knowledge, salaka. You know what salaka means? What does salaka? Oh, I want those Palestinian brothers who say salak yani boiled stuff. No, no, it's not that salak. That's salak, right? Like <laughs> qaf. But we say in Palestine, every qaf becomes a calf, right? So salaka means you 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 treaded a path. You just started. You you signed up for a once a week class. <laughs> okay? You signed up for a twice a week class. You you went to an Islamic seminary or a university and you say, you know what? I am going to study Islamic knowledge. You know, this is the amount of time I could put. I have work, I have other responsibilities, but I want to be consistent with this. This is, this is my path of knowledge. Salak. You know, you need a certain type of discipline to, to tread, right, a path. Right? You can't just say, yeah, I'm walking and you're chilling the whole time. You're like, oh, where are you going? Well, I'm uh, traveling to Tennessee. Ya khi tayyib, how far? Well, I've been in Bucky's for three days. Just chopping and sleeping and eating uh, beef jerkies. <laughs> so we're saying like, Ya khi you're not on the path to Aslan. Yeah, you, 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 you're just distracted. Consistency is being on the path. Continue, co being continuous with it is being on the path. Do you get it, guys? So that's why man salaka, the Prophet ﷺ chose the word salak. Okay. What would Allah do? The same way you're traveling on the path of knowledge, Allah will pave a path for you to Jannah. You're not going to know. You know how Allah paves a path to Jannah? How does Allah pave a path to Jannah? It's so mysterious. Wallah, you could come, you decide to, you decide to seek knowledge, and you've been looking to get married for a long time, and subhanAllah, it just comes and I'm not guaranteeing like for those who are not like there's no guarantees I'm not the match all oh, I do do matchmaking and stuff but I, I'm not guaranteeing anyone this but I'm saying this is an example how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring a person to you that will rectify your, the matters of your deed a wife a spouse that could or a, or a husband that can bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may go to Jannah so that you could, you could live an upright life. Imagine, you start seeking knowledge and you're working in something that has some haram aspects and Allah blesses you with a job opportunity with no haram aspects because He wants you to get to Jannah. Do you get it? You never had time to go to Jum'ah because your boss wouldn't allow you to. You always ask for requests and you're missing Jum'ah. You're doing Jum'ah once every three weeks. But guess what? You, have a, you, you follow a path to Jannah, that boss gets fired, a new boss comes and he's Muslim or he's sympathetic to Zah, he's like, go to, go to Jum'ah so that you can go to Jannah. Allah paves the path. 
سهل الله له به طريقا الى الجنه احسنت طيب now what is there's a hadith that i was worried that it's weak but alhamdulillah alhamdulillah there is other turuk that made it strong so that it's accepted alhamdulillah in its narration you're going to understand why so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in this hadith inna allah wa malaikatahu Indeed, Allah and His angels, وَأَهْلُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and the inhabitants of all the heavens and all the earths, حَتَّى النَّمْلَةُ فِي جُحْرِهَا and the ants underground, وَحَتَّى الْحُوتِ and even the fish in the sea, لَيُصَلُّونَ عَلَى مُعَلِّمِ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرِ they pray for the one who teaches khair to people. Okay. Who? Allah and His angels, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, and who? The ant. Why would the ant possibly pray for the person who teaches people khair? Because we teach perhaps the, that it's haram to burn ants, for those of you who burned the ants before. Prophet ﷺ forbade us from that. He forbade us. From burning ants. وَحَتَّى الْحُوتِ Even the, the fish in the sea, they pray. Why? Because they teach us. Islam teaches us. And the muallim, the teacher, teaches how to deal with the sea. How to not corrupt the sea. How to be, you know, to not eat or take more than what you can consume. Right? And even the animal and the bee, like the, 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 the sheep and the cows that we slaughter. Imagine we take حَتَّى ال... فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُوا قِتْلَ Like the Prophet said. If you slaughter it, then make it good. Make it pleasant. Make it easy. وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفْرَتَهُ وَلْيُرِحْ ذَبِيحَتَهُ Make your knife sharp. So the one who is teaching the people, Ya Jama'a, make your knife sharp. What do you think the lamb is saying? If the lamb could speak, Alhamdulillah, it was sharp. I didn't feel a thing. Jazallah khair, whoever taught him to make it sharp. So they're remembering the person who teaches the people khair. Alhamdulillah. So, now we're not going to go too deep, but these are the hadith that, that the, the, the shaykh began, uh, began the talk or began the chapter uh, with. And then I'm going to briefly go through some of the points uh, in the chapter so that we could do one chapter at a time, inshallah, as we go through. <coughs> Where's my phone? I had some very nice notes on my phone that's about to die. Allahu Akbar. Let's see if Allah puts barakah in this, in this charge. Tayyib. So, Bismillah. Tayyib. Is seeking knowledge a fard upon every Muslim or not? Is it fard ayn or fard kifa? You know there's two types of fard. There's fard ayn which you have to do and you're sinful if you don't and there's fard kifaya that if a group does it then alhamdulillah the, the sin is relieved and relinquished from everyone. طيب. There's two types of ilm. There's ilm that is a fard ayn upon all of us. What is this ilm? The ilm of tahara, how to purify ourselves. Salah, how to pray. Well, if you have money, then you have to know about zakah. If you are about to experience Ramadan, then you have to learn about what breaks and nullifies the fast. And when you have to start and when you have to finish. A person cannot go through Ramadans without asking. They're completely sinful. A person cannot say, I never knew I had to give zakah. I never knew zakah was 2.5% of the, the, the property and the money and the wealth and the gold and silver that I owned for a whole entire year that's above the nisab amount. Right? They're sinful for not. So there's that level. And then there's fard kifaya. What's fard kifaya? Like what? Give me an example of fard kifaya. Something that is incumbent on a, a small group of people. Salat al janazah How about with regards to ilm? How about like, for example, like studying ilm al-mawarith, inheritance law, right? Ilm al-fara'il. 
is that is that for Ain? Is that for the Should everybody study Faraid and how to do inheritance? Okay. But if a few people do it, Alhamdulillah, that's enough. If they suffice the Ummah, then Alhamdulillah, Khairu Barak. Yani, that's good. طيب. But what about this ilm? The ilm of the heart. Ilm of Tazkiyah. We're talking about Tawakkul. We're talking about Yaqeen. We're talking about Sabr. We're talking about Ikhlas. Is this Fard Ayn or Kifaya? Wait, if you say Fard Ayn, that means learning it, not learning it is sinful. Is it Fard Ayn or Kifaya? Now I'm going to throw you a trick question. I, I do trick questions all the time, right? Tell me, is it Fard Ayn or Kifaya? If you say Fard Ayn, raise your hand. Is studying Tazkiya, Ilm, Tawakkul, Is Sabr, Al Ikhlas, Al Yaqeen? Yes. The ulama said it is the essence of Fard Ayn. And as a matter of fact, the Mu'allif Ibn Qudama Rahimullah, he said the word fiqh amongst the Tabi'een and the Tabi'eet Tabi'een and the early scholars of Islam, when we said fiqh, right now when we say fiqh, what does it mean? When I say fiqh, what does it mean? The knowledge of, of the specific rulings within Islam, right? Say, so, oh, he's a scholar of fiqh. Ibn Qudama said, that is a corrupted meaning. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. He says it in the beginning of this chapter. He said, that's a corrupted meaning. The real meaning of fiqh amongst the scholars of the old is knowledge of this tazkiyah, knowledge of the heart. Ilm al tawakkul wal sabr wal ikhlas wal yaqeen and all these. These, these meanings that we're going to study inshallah. The one who understood the depth of the meanings of these rulings, that is the one who is called the faqih. As for the one who just mentions uh, you know, opinions upon opinions and can debate and, and whatnot, that's not a faqih, according to the old scholars. Even if they're called fuqaha in the new times. Why a jama'ah? Because somebody who has knowledge and uses it to debate more than to self-reflect and it makes him arrogant more than humble what is the point of this ilm? what is the point of this ilm? Yani the whole purpose of this ilm. remember what we said last week يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَبَنٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبِتِهِمْ طب إحنا we know the heart is, is what is going to count in the Day of Judgment. Why should we care about anything else? As a matter of fact, yani even the Shaykh said, he said, he's surprised how people extensively study ilm, ulum al-ala. They get into Arabi language, very deep into Arabi language until they study the poetry of Jahiliya. And they go into the ilm of Mustalah al-Hadith until they memorize every narrator and when they died and when they and, and, and how long they narrated Hadith and who they studied with and their chains of narration. And they get so deep into this and he's like, وَلَمْ يُؤْتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنْ عِلْمِ الْقَلْبِ وَعِلْمِ التَّزْكِيَةِ SubhanAllah. They don't even give, he's like, this person's wasting their time. He's like, if you ask him about Al Mustalah al Hadith, if you ask him about extensively learning Arabic language, they would say, yeah, this is a kifaya. But what about tawakkul? They would say, it's fard ain. But why aren't you studying it more? Why aren't you dedicating time for it? Why aren't you specifying a time just for your heart? What's your issue? Are you truly doing this for Allah or not? This is what the Shaykh is trying to, um, to, to emphasize here. So there's what they say, there's علوم أساسية وعلوم تكملية. By the way, علم فرض عين, the knowledge that's فرض عين, that's incumbent and we are sinful for leaving is not only specific to علم الشريعة. It's not only. So if Muslims do not have enough doctors in a certain field, it is obligatory for Muslims to produce doctors in that field. We move to a community. Imagine, how many Muslims do we have in Richardson? A lot? Tens or hundreds of thousands? 10,000? Probably more? Others. Imagine if we don't have a single gynecologist, female gynecologist for the Muslim community. Are all the Muslims sinful? Yes. yes. <laughs> we have to, if we don't have enough 
then we are sinful. Tayyib, if we don't have enough representation in the engineering field, in the field of law, in the field of politics, in the field of any field, any given field that affects the livelihood of Muslims here, if we fail to produce it, then we are not doing this fard. And someone and the community collectively is sinful for not uh, producing it. And I think if we, you know, we're always thinking, we're not, Islam is not disconnected from reality, guys. You know, some people, they try to think, and this is like, this is like secularization of faith. So far, you, you know, Islam, alhamdulillah, is the last religion on earth. Why do I say that? Someone's like, yo, that sounds so bad. How are you going to tell people about it? Yes. Every religion was secularized. Every religion produced a form of religiosity that fits the secular mold that was placed for them. Islam is something they were not able, although they are attempting to, to secularize. Because it covers every aspect of life. It's not just come and pray and leave. No, you're Islam. Everything you're learning here, you're going to go and apply it outside. It's in your job. It's with your wife and your kids. It's, it's driving here and back. It's dealing with your neighbor, right? Everything in your life is encompassed within this faith. And that's the mindset we should have. The person that thinks, well, I just want to feel good. I want to listen to Sheikh Majid, mashallah, his beautiful recitation, his heartwarming, and then I go back and return to my sins and return to my... Then what's, where's the good in us? Where are we going? So. The Sheikh, he, he dropped a, a very nice gem. He said, be one of these two people. He said, Kun imma munshagilan binafsik aw munshagilan bighayrika ba'd al faragh min nafsik. He said, be either busy with yourself or busy with others after you completed yourself. Be busy with yourself or busy with others after you completed yourself. So if you're focusing on others so much and trying to help others so much and trying to care for others so much, ask yourself one question. Did I finish from me or no? If the answer is no, then we should be focusing on us. Some people, they focus on other people so much. Yeah, and that's why the Sheikh right after in the sentence, he said, if you're the person that's neglecting yourself and focusing on others, he said, then you're lost. You're going to lose your path. You're going to lose your way. And I know some people are extremely empathetic. And they, 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 they feel with others. And, and they cannot see someone misguided without them helping. And they try to help, but they exhaust themselves. They're always there for the others, but they're never there for them. For that person, I tell them one thing. Ya ikhwani wa ya khawati, care for yourself the way you would care for someone who you really care about. Okay? Imagine yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself. Analyze yourself in a mirror. How much would you help yourself when you're looking at it? And help yourself that much. And once you're done with yourself, then move on to others. The Sheikh gives an example. He's like, the person who occupies them, themselves with others before they finish from themselves is like the one who has, uh, who has scorpions climbing up their legs and they're busy shooing away the flies from their friend's food and their friend's face. They're like, oh, yeah. That's the example he gave in the book. He's like, why are you shooing away? What are you doing? Do it yourself. Let the, let the inshallah, the, the scorpions on his face. Help yourself. Show it away. If, if you don't expose yourself to destruction. Right? And what's, wor what's bad about this is that shaitan makes you feel good about it. Makes you feel like I'm being rewarded. You're neglecting yourself until you help others so much. You give others so much. You're, you're doing so much neglecting yourself until you're completely exhausted and that's how people fall off the deen and that's how people fall back on their heels and that's how people go back on what they used to be people change remember the, the example i gave last week we were affected impacted 
by a certain verse, we, we had Allahu Akbar, we read the Quran, we feel so strong. I listened to this whole seerah series, I listened to this whole aqidah series, I read this whole book, I feel so strong. And you're giving, and you're giving, and you're doing until it's drained. You neglected yourself so long from that little spark that you got early on until there's no spark left. And then you, shaitan makes you like, look, well, I look, you're helping all these others, you're such a hypocrite. Where are you going with your own life? Subhanallah. Don't be that person. Be the balance. Help yourself first. And that's, that's very important with ilm. And a lot of people, when they attain ilm, one of the first plots of shaitan, because, you know, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, لِكُلِّ عَمَلٍ شِرَّةٍ You know, every action has a spark. You know, when we're first practicing, do we get excited? Yes or no? Who felt this excitement when they first started to practice, pray and, and you felt this excitement? I felt it. Oh man, I sure felt it. Allah, <laughs> And that spark is going to die down sometime, right? But you know when this spark comes and you're excited, you learn something new, what do you go do? The first thing you do is you go tell the close people. You go tell your mom and dad. And then you go tell your wife. And you go tell your kids. And you go tell your friends. And you're at work. Yo, bro, the hadith. Oh, what you're doing is haram, by the way, bro. That's haram. I know it's haram. Dude, yeah, you were doing it last week. Why all of a sudden now? Ya why aren't you praying? Alhamdulillah. Look, he, he joined the Fajr flock. He started praying Fajr, Allah Mubarak, every single day for a whopping seven days. Well, you have people who are, they've been praying Fajr for 40 years here, right? Man's praying Fajr in Jama'ah, right? He made it to Iqama for seven days in a row, goes to his friend. It's like, yeah, you know you got to get on Fajr, bro. You're falling off, man. <laughs> How do you find it in your heart to say that? Dude, did you even, did you even finish from you to start with them? Leave them that's, like, that's like somebody, imagine... Imagine you 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 and a bunch of brothers are blind. You're sitting in a room and you're used to being blind and eating and all that. Now, you know, may Allah preserve our sight. And then Allah blesses you with sight. You do an operation, you could see again. And then you look at your friends who are still blind. Allah didn't bless them with the money to do the operation that you did. Or maybe they have another illness. And you start like, bro, why don't you cross the street, man? The crosswalk is right there. You just gotta walk. It's easy. Just get up and walk straight. Is is it? Yahi, he can't see yet. The brother, the sister cannot see. How are you trying to get them to cross the street by themselves? Do you get what I'm saying? So we're not done with ourselves. Let's not start with others. That's a big uh, thing that he uh, emphasized here. So inshallah ta'ala with this. We're going to end uh, the chapter or this segment of the chapter of Ilm, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the next chapter is the, the ulama, right? The dealings with the scholars and the people of knowledge, their afat, their shortcomings, and their signs of genuineness, right? This is something that's big uh, that we need to learn about, inshallah ta'ala. And then after that, we're going to get into the purification of the heart the tahara not the tahara of wudu and ghusl and whatnot and, and washing najasas no 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 this is a deeper tahara inshallah jazakumullah khair we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts we ask Allah to increase us in knowledge we ask Allah to make us from those who seek a path in knowledge and we ask Allah to make this path lead us to Jannatul Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us callers of good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us forbidders of evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us and guide us to the straight path, for only He can guide us to the straight path. Jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'amana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.